Hello, it's Koi and welcome to the Eclectic Cottage. Thanks for joining me today. I am in the art room. I have been working today on, you know, on prepping some pockets. So I've got a lot of things glued down with a, you know, a backer to make them a little bit stronger. And I'm waiting for the glue to dry. Um, later this afternoon, I'll be trimming these things up. to make some pockets. And in the meantime, I thought I would turn the camera on. I pulled out some scraps over there. I pulled out some scraps and thought I would do a little scrap busting and make a masterboard or two to use when making pockets. <laughs> Let's see. And I thought I would turn the camera on um, while we're doing this. If you are so inspired, I would suggest putting the video on pause and going to pull out your scraps and a base. I'm using, I'm just using, oh yeah, I'm using mine for pockets. So I'm using paper from the trash bin <laughs> and you can use anything. You can use um, book pages, you can use scrapbook paper, whatever you'd like. And um, we don't need a lot. We need a scissor or a ruler, however you like to Trim your papers, um, some scraps, and some glue. And that should pretty much do it. All right, and I am going to start with a large one and I don't know how many of these I'm going to put together, but I'm going to start with the with these two. And <coughs> I like to get them glued together here. Some of these scraps are a little on the smallish side, but that's okay. We'll make some master boards and then we'll, you know, just turn them over. I always like doing that. Um, turn them over and see what we what we end up with a collage base for pockets. All right, so let's cover the the seam. Okay, how are all of you doing? Interested to know what's going on on your desk? Are you working on a particular project or thinking about a particular project? Spring is coming. We've got things are happening. Spring is coming. So spring journals will um, be popping up. Some people make Easter journals. Well, Easter bunnies and chicks and eggs and such. And uh, I tend to just lean towards pretty much eclectic journals. Um, I do use some digitals, but usually it's like background pages and such. Uh, I don't really use kits to, um, you know, kits that would put everything together. Although I have done that once or twice, you know, with people I know, I've uh, tried out their kits and it's amazing how um, 
easy it is to put a journal together when someone else has done all the hard work with creating, doing the creating and putting together things that that coordinate perfectly with each other and all you have to do is glue them in. I don't tend to do that. I don't really like doing that. But the time or two that I have, I'm like, oh, wow, this is really easy. I tend to go more by gut, by a feeling. I don't think I should really be gluing on this paper because sooner or later it's going to get too gluey and we'll add glue to the front of my collage pieces. All right, at least we've got the seam handled. Let's see, get some glue papers. All right. Tell me how you normally bust your scraps. Do you do you make collage boards? Do you make master boards? Do you I have a book that in a perfect world, I have this book that at the end of the day I would pick up all the scraps around and and um glue them down in that book. So I wouldn't end up with, with heaps of scraps on the desk. All right, I kind of like to do the, cor the corners, get those going. And I'm gonna really not think about this too much the scraps are from projects over the last few months, so the fall stuff will be in, you know, there's fall colors, you can see fall um, earthy tones in here, and probably some from Mardi Gras, and um, I don't think I pulled out anything that was Christmassy. I'm not really looking to go the Christmas route. Although some of these I would have used at Christmas time also. Oh, <laughs> I, glued I glued this one to my glue page. Smart. Sometimes when you're making a video, for those of you that that have a YouTube channel, you probably know exactly what I mean. When you are making a video, uh, sometimes it's hard to think and craft and do all the things you have to do all at the same time. <laughs> so I'm probably not the only one that's ever glued my scrap to my glue page. I'm just the only one that's done it here today at the Eclectic Cottage. Feels kind of silly. Like, where were you? What were you doing? What were you thinking? Silly goose. All right, that's my corners. Pages should be dry. I've been using them this morning for gluing down the pockets. All right, I, I'm, you know, I notice that most of my scraps, and I'm sure that if you d are doing similar work as me. You are doing junk journals. Most of our scraps end up being rectangles, which makes them easy to um, piece together. Kind of like a jigsaw puzzle when you start doing a collage. Most everything is in rectangular shape. 
like that. We could still use it, but random. Like there's not going to be a lot of circles and things like that in my scrap stash, I don't think. we do we can do this and then fill in gaps yeah it's just as easy just to use the rectangles or turn it into a rectangle before you put it down Scraps, scraps, scraps. I don't know. Sometimes I think, you know, with all the paper we have available, sometimes I think it would be just as easy just to, to throw them away than it is to use all this glue <coughs> and make all this effort to make something out of them. But it just isn't in us, is it? It's hard to throw the scraps away. Yeah, they don't have to really coordinate. This is just a, an eclectic array of stash scraps. Put that one there. some neutral colors going in here not too all that color on color could be a lot I have a piece of book page this is dictionary page I believe and it's a little bit it's a really old dictionary and it's a little bit on the brittle side so the best thing to do with this paper is glue it down on to a substrate like this. All right, for those of you that are new to junk journaling, it really, this is really, um, scrap busting or collaging is really a great way to get started when you just don't have a lot of mojo going. You know, if you, if you are having trouble getting into the art room and starting, once you start, you know, once you start, like, who was it, Picasso, that said inspiration does exist, but it must find you working? Just start. Start somewhere. Start gluing gluing pages that you know papers down and random papers down and making a collage just cut some things out and make some pockets a pocket you know a pocket like a bottom pocket when you when we fold when we are making our um journal pages most of us are folding a piece of eight and a half by eleven paper in half to make our journal pages. So if you do that, that makes your, each page, each individual page, eight and a half by five and a half, because that's, you know, the 11. So eight and a half by five and a half. So I usually make my pockets like five and a quarter. Just make some five and a quarter inch by, what, three, 
four, three and a half, three, three and a half, four inch um, <clears throat> inches and glue in your pocket. The hardest part is getting started. The hardest part is showing up. Once you show up and you start working with your papers, you start working with your scraps, you start working with, you know, the materials that you have around you, your fabrics and your, you know, your laces and, you know, pretty papers, then it's easy to start putting something together. And that's what we do here at the Eclectic Cottage. We just show up every day and do something. And then you end up with a gorgeous, you know, journal in the end, something that you can be proud of. And I hope that some of you are inspired to craft along, start a new journal, work on one that you've shelved, you've put on the shelf, that's, you know, an idea. If you have some that you've, you know, that you've put away and haven't been using, pull one off the shelf. Let's work on them. So my, the part where I'm at right now is making the pockets. I need to get the pockets, the side tucks, the page flips, and those kind of things, the belly bands, I need to get those kind of things put into the book. Okay, and that, you know, usually takes a couple of days. I've got two journals going, so that'll take a few days. After that, we'll start working on tags, pocket stuffers, things to stuff our pockets with. So our tags, our journal cards, our, you know, things floating, floating pockets, the things that we stuff into the pocket. All right, how do I have that little piece right there? Let us cover it up. Today's Valentine's Day. I have all of you are doing something nice, being treated to something nice, or treating yourself to something nice. Today, a lot of people don't, you know, don't um, acknowledge Valentine's Day, and I can understand that. It's kind of a made-up holiday, but that's okay. There's those of us that, you know, that do even, you know, even on, you know, even if there's days when you don't have anyone else around, you can still celebrate by yourself. You can still celebrate you. You can celebrate love. You can celebrate putting that energy, putting positive energy out there into the world. I was excited to get a invitation from my son and my son-in-law to dinner and game night tonight. And I'm excited about that. Nothing, you know, no big hoopla. We're just going to gather. We're going to gather and spend a little time break bread, spend a little time together. I always look forward. Those are my two favorite, two, not my two favorite, but two of my favorite people in the world. I love my boys. And I love my girls. My oldest daughter, I don't know exactly what her plans are, I don't know if she's coming tonight. Maybe she's coming to her brother's house tonight. I'm not sure. Um, but her 
and her boyfriend. If not, her and her boyfriend are probably going to have a date night or something. I'll probably try and find out after we get off the video. Now that we're talking about it, it makes me wonder, hey, what are you all up to tonight? Quite often we have crawfish for Valentine's Day. Is They're very, very, very expensive. There's the price, thank goodness, the price is starting to drop. It's gone from um, $16.99 a pound, so that's 17 bucks a pound. And again, five pounds, usually five pounds is a serving. Like each person usually orders five pounds. So <laughs> if it's $17 a pound, five pounds is really expensive. But I think I saw that they were, you know, that it dropped down to, they're dropping it down at least for Valentine's Day. For today, I know that they're dropping it down to um, $9.99 a pound. So, but that's still 50 bucks, 50 bucks per person. That's a lot. By Easter, the price should drop pretty significantly. Once everything warms up and the, the yields are larger. Supply and demand, supply and demand. I know I talk about crawfish a lot. It's one of my favorite things. One of my favorite things. I could have it once a week. I could have it twice a week during crawfish season. Towards the end of the season, it goes down. They'll have specials where they're running it for two fifty a pound. $2.50 a pound. It happens. It happened last year at the end of the season. So it's hard from going at the end of the season, paying two fifty to think about paying, you know, seventeen dollars a pound. But I'm sure there's people out there that paid it. That's not. I can't. I can't. I just can't. I don't, I don't want to. $50, maybe, maybe for Valentine's Day. My son is not a crawfish lover. My son-in-law is, he loves it as much as I do. We are crawfish lovers from way back. But Joey... Does not eat seafood, period. That's all. Blue or yellow? Blue or yellow? Let's go with the blue. We're getting there.
little music page. Did I see another little spot somewhere? Yes, yeah, right there. Let's put something in there. A little piece of yellow. Okay. Let's put a little piece of yellow. is a little on the mushy side, I think. Okay. There we have it. And let's see. Pockets. Let's have some pockets. First of all, it can't be wider than five and a half, so let's try starting with five and a half. Want to turn it over? Let's turn it over so we can't see what we're getting. We'll have a little surprise. All right, so five and a half for the width. Yeah, I really need to wait till the glue dries. But I don't want to. Okay, five and a half. All right, don't do as I do. Wait for your glue to dry. I'm doing it because we're on video and I don't really want to pause the video. All right, we're doing pockets, so everything's going to be five and a half. And then we can decide on some different measurements. Hmm. Okay, I don't really want to cut right on the, the seam, but I will. Five and a half, five and a half. Five and a half. All right, and we'll make some. All right, so this is eight. Eight and a half. So let's make them um, two point seven five. three like that and then eight and a half would be four and a quarter if we do let's see four and a quarter It'll be a larger pocket make two at four and a quarter And let's make some side tucks so we can make those. We'll make a two inch one for a side tuck that will go like this. And we'll cut this in half. Well, we'll do five and a half, five and a quarter. Okay. And this will be a little tuck. Okay. And one more little piece.
Let's make one more side tuck for the other journal. How wide did we do? Two inches? Yep, two inches. This can be either a side tuck or a belly band. Why don't we make a side tuck and two belly bands? This is three, three and a half. So one and three quarters. We cut that in half. All right, so we'll have belly bands and side tucks. All right, let's take a look at what we did. This is, this, I cut this out one day, you know, just because it's a piece of acetate and it comes in handy so often when I'm trying, you know, like if I want to see, you know, where to place something or what something's going to look like underneath. I use this all the time. Um, it's my sample journal page. All right, let's see how many of them we ended up with and what they look like. We have a lot of scraps left over. We didn't, we barely touched them. Okay, cute. Cute, I like them. Yep, I like them. And then we can do a little decorating on them when we start to use them. I don't have a lot of fussy cutting or anything done yet. So when we get to that part here, we can, you know, add something to the center on the ones that are belly bands. The more narrow ones are belly bands and side tucks. Okay. Very good. We busted some scraps, not nearly enough. We didn't make too many more new scraps. I really hate when you're um, scrap busting <laughs> and all you're doing is taking the big scraps, scraps and making them smaller. I hate ending up with more scraps than you started, you know, as many scraps as you started with. And we are not, but we still have a lot. We could have done 10, 10 pages with all these scraps. And the video is already 30 minutes, so I don't think I'm going to do any more. I'll put these away and save them for a different day. Okay, I thank you all for being here with me today and uh, doing a little scrap busting. If you are so inclined, hey, play the video again. Go get some scraps, play the video again. Let's, um, let's bust our scraps together. All right, I'm gonna say goodbye for now. Happy Valentine's Day to you all. And I'm going to call it a wrap here and I will see you again real soon. Bye. Again, I'm going to show you on the way out what we ended up with. Bye.